this is joint work with my partner, uh, Elizabeth Heathfield. And um, we've been working on this for the last year or so, putting together a bunch of ideas of how to take mathematical ideas uh, and make them sort of large and visible and easy to do in classrooms especially. Um, so uh, here's an example of one in which we've uh, made a dome. Um, as background, uh, many of you know me as someone who makes a lot of mathematical sculptures. I like to take mathematical ideas and make them uh, big out of metal or whatever. Um, so I do a lot of that. I also do a lot of uh, education. Uh, in the past, I found a lot of support. Uh, private schools, universities can afford to sort of fly me out and it's been a wonderful life in which uh, people fly me to different countries and I'll come up with an activity uh, and do that with a group of students and uh, try and document it as best I can. Uh, I also do uh, a lot of teaching to, uh, to teachers where uh, I try and take these workshop things and explain them to teachers in a way that they can then uh, expand them and do them in their own schools. Um, about two years ago I met Elizabeth and uh, she's an elementary school teacher in uh, Canada and I discovered that she's been taking some of my ideas or some of these workshops I've developed and uh, doing them with much younger grades. I didn't think you could do these things that I've been doing with college students or faculty and do them with you know first and second graders. Um, so she's been taking um, different kinds of math things and compressing them down to smaller people that they work. Um, so we've been working together um, trying to reach more students. So instead of just going to private schools that can afford uh, to fly people out, uh, but to try and get them into lots of other schools. Um, we wrote a proposal to uh, Math for America that's been funding us to a certain extent. Uh, we've been working in New York City schools and um, just trying to document things and make them as easy as possible for teachers or anyone else. You could do this in you know, museums or after school clubs or just on your own. Um, to make sort of math uh, objects in a way that you can make them visible, have them out in the world, uh, get people to think about math in a different way as something that's beautiful and creative and fun. Uh, in the same way that schools have lots of language things all over the place, there's books and there's sort of excitement about reading books. Uh, we want people just to see that math is exciting, just change the culture by having them uh, see that there's something cool about you know a giant hyperboloid or whatever that is that maybe they'll learn about in some uh, later year. Just get them thinking that math is fun. Uh, so we have on our website, uh, oops, we have on our website uh, a series of activities that we've documented, and we have a whole lot in the works as we get the time. Uh, we'll just show you a few pictures of some of these. Uh, this is a hyperboloid made out of skewers. You can also do this with chopsticks, but you just get. Uh, bamboo shish kebab skewers, put them together with little uh, rubber bands for making ponytails, and you can create these hyperboloids, and they flex and they're fun. Uh, you can wear them on your head, uh, and then you can scale it up. Uh, so a number of our workshops take ideas and first make them small, perhaps in paper, and then maybe in cardboard, and then uh, larger in wood, as a way for people to sort of get the the geometric ideas and to think about it on a small scale and then they automatically know what to do. You just hand them these, a, a pile of four foot long dowels and they'll just self-organize and figure out how to, to create the larger scale ones and then you can hang that up and display it and it flexes in a nice fun way. Uh, here's another uh, set of workshops made out of paper, uh, very inexpensive. You can copy some templates, cut, cut them out and cut slots uh, and this is a challenging puzzle. This can be done on different levels where at first uh, you ignore color and you have a geometric problem to assemble these in, in a fun way. Um, and then you can add color. Uh, well, this is the non-colored version. Uh, in the colored version, uh, there's a combinatorics, oops, uh, there's a combinatorics to uh, how do you arrange these pieces so that there's five different colors around each hole. Each color touch, each square touches squares of the other four colors of the five colors. Um, and interesting, we've discovered a lot in doing this. Um, a lot of students, high school students nowadays, uh, don't use scissors. They don't know how to cut the slots in a square. It's surprising to us. They, they're great at you know, video games, uh, but they've lost touch with many hands-on things. Um, so we're sort of discovering as we track, practice this in different schools, um, things that we have to write out and sort of give in, in great detail uh, to make these things work. Uh, another workshop is to make Soma. Soma is a classic puzzle you probably know by Pete Hine uh, involving uh, polycubes that go together in a certain way to make a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube and lots of other things. Uh, this is a great one to give with students, including very young students. You give them a pile of cubes. Uh, you can have them design the puzzle by, say, find all the, uh, the, the ways to put together no more than four cubes, uh, which doesn't look like a rectangle, and those will give you the seven pieces. You can discover those. You can talk about the chirality of the, the one that's left-handed versus right-handed. Um, after you glue it together out of uh, little cubes, everyone can take a set home. 
uh, you can make it larger. So get cardboard boxes, tape them together. Uh, I've done this with two foot boxes with older kids. Uh, with the younger kids, about a one foot box uh, is wonderful. They put together the whole set um, and then they put it together and uh, then they can continue doing this uh, in the classroom. This can be played with all year. Whenever there's time, they can make some new shapes. They can challenge each other to make shapes, etc. cetera. Um, balloons is another wonderful material that you can make uh, all kinds of things with. Here's a Sapinski tetrahedron. Um, bubbles, if you've never made a cubicle bubble, you should make a cubicle bubble. There's lots you can do as a bubble workshop. Um, easy to do once you know the trick, and then wonderful mathematical ideas you can communicate. Why does it work with a cube? Uh, it works with a dodecahedron. Uh, it doesn't work with an icosahedron or an octahedron. Uh, you, can, you can get into deeper questions uh, depending on the age of the students. Um, this is a pencil sculpture, just pencils and rubber bands put together uh, in the same directions as the four diagonals of a cube. Um, zone tool, I love zone tool. You can make all kinds of wonderful things uh, at a zone tool. This is the start of a Stupinsky tetrahedron. Um, and lots of other things you can make. You can do workshops there that are very structured or very uh, sort of play oriented or kind of alternate between the two. Um, always having informal opportunities to talk about math. In the context, when something comes up, students naturally ask questions. You don't have to give them a lecture. You just talk about the thing they're curious at the time, uh, and you can just communicate the creative and, and fun side of math. Uh, playing cards, this is something that was my exchange gift a few years ago. Um, if you get giant-sized playing cards, this becomes uh, just kind of a fun object you, that you can make and take with you. Uh, this is a fun one. Um, a little-known construction, a way to dissect the rhombic tricontahedron into 20 parallel pipeds of different sorts with a coloring pattern. Um, it goes together as a, we first do this in paper and then scale it up uh, to a cardboard size construction. Um, there's a geometric puzzle to how the pieces go together and then a, um, a coloring con uh, aspect as well in which you have to match same colors to same colors. Um, wonderful patterns and structures in there that you can talk about at different levels and a beautiful object that you're done with that you can play with all year. Um, <clears throat> here's a large cardboard construction. So cardboard, you can order sheets, uh, fairly inexpensive to make giant structures. And then uh, you can follow templates. We have these online, glue them together using clamps, take off the clamps, and then you have uh, a big sculpture. Um, <clears throat> the last one here is domes. We can make these in paper, we can make them larger. This one uses wood. Um, we're assuming that laser cutters are going to become ubiquitous in the way that 3D printers are. Uh, every school has a 3D printer. Teachers don't know what to do with them. In the same way, laser cutters will be everywhere. Uh, with laser cutters, you can make so many things. Uh, there's templates for this particular dome. Uh, here's a larger version made out of cardboard. Um, I won't go, let, I'll just let you read this. Um, we haven't done any formal assessments, uh, but just informal surveys shows us that teachers and students really uh, love this sort of activity. Um, so to learn more, you can go to our website, makingmathvisible.com. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much.